Hello, Winternets! I'm Hamster Bomb, and you guys are watching a new, um, I guess I get to do a figure review video! Yay! I haven't gotten to do one of these in so long, I'm really excited. And, uh, this one's really special, because as we've just finished playing Metal Gear Solid 5 on the channel, technically Metal Gear Solid is finally done on the channel, um, I had to get my hands on the new, um, and last... Metal Gear model that they made. I have uh, the Metal Gear Rex that they made. They made a Metal Gear Ray. Um, you can check out videos I've made of both of those after the models complete, which is what we're going to be looking at today. And then uh, as for those guys, I also have videos done for when the actual painting gets finished. That's totally different. That's a lot of other things to look at. But for right now, we're going to be looking at this guy in his model form because um, he's huge. So you see like He's really huge, okay? Like, do, do you see the difference here between, like, Rex and Ray? I can't even get my background set up properly because of how big it is. Rex stands about this high, like, railgun and back and all, and Ray is a little taller. He's about here. Um, this guy's railgun, like, is almost off the screen. He's so tall. He's enormous. Um, and, of course, on top of that, he's also very, very detailed. And um, all so many little parts of him want to come off and you can see little jiggling things that just want to fall and I can't wait till he's painted not so much because of how he's gonna look mostly because oh my goodness this guy's just gonna fall apart um, we'll get into all the little things as we're going through here uh, right away because I know you guys are probably gonna be watching this mainly looking for like if I want to get this model is it um, you know is it hard to make or um, does he stand up well? Does he transform cool? Is everything work okay? Um, that kind of stuff. So before I get into him, as I always do with models, I am going to first start with something else. I'm going to move over here. We always took a look at the box. And this box, just like the other two, is really cool. We'll pull this up here. This thing's amazing. Um, this is just typically what the uh, main box looks like. Uh, once again, it's very metallic, though it's got a big... Uh, Red um, V for Metal Gear 5 in there. Very cool. Uh, 1 100 scale, in case you guys are curious what the scales are for these things. Uh, I'm going to get a little closer so we can see the sides of these. Unfortunately, I got a, a lamp right there. There we go. Um, focus will catch up with this in just a moment. But uh, over here, just so we can see some, you know, a bunch of generic stuff nobody really cares about. Um, so, yeah, this kind of shows. There's actually, those are painted models on there. If it would... Uh, Focus properly. It'll take a second, but it'll get there. Um, so you can see like several different uh, poses with him, him uh, holding the sword. There we go. Um, you can see, obviously, these are all painted on here, like I said. So we're going to see the little figures for the um, characters as well as a um, interchangeable railgun. You can see that over there. And um, decals for the face is all in there, and we'll see that stuff in a moment. Metal Gear Solid Anthropus, this is showing him in his Rex form. Um, don't be deceived, they don't actually light up. Um, I don't know why they illustrated it like that, totally misleading, it does not light up. Um, though, I think there is a Metal Gear Rex that does light up, it's a very expensive one, but Rex only, it wasn't made by this company. Actually, it wasn't this series, how about that? I don't know if it was this company or not. Kind of hard to see because it's so metallic, but, um, there's two different images showing, yeah, Rex mode versus, uh, I don't know what you call this mode, standing mode, style, anthropus mode. Whatever, but uh, yes, it can alternate between both, and I will show you in a second part after this video. Like, in the middle, I'm going to cut, and we're going to show it um, when he's in Rex mode instead. And uh, just an image from um, uh, Snake over there on the side, and then Silanthropus standing is on the other side. Other than that, it's just a regular model box. And uh, the rest of it really is just, as you would expect, um, I've got tons of these things in here. I'm not going to pull all that out, obviously. But instead, I'm going to pull out the other stuff. Um, so, yes, you do get the decals in here. And um, just in case you guys don't know how these work, um, make sure you either look it up online first before you start. But there's, they're not stickers. you got to, like, dip it in water and then try and uh, set it properly on the model before you actually mess with it. So don't treat them like stickers. Otherwise, you're going to ruin the whole thing. Um, really good, helpful, obviously, book to get the whole thing together with some cool art inside. Also, um, they got some great images for showing how the thing needs to be painted. Um, in the end, I think it was the most useful part. They do give you this. It's a, a three-fold that opens up showing um, where exactly all the paint needs to go and what kind of patterns. They're actually showing you the camouflage templates and what paints they use for theirs. 
I never use their exact paints. I always mess around with mine. So if you like the style I used, I kind of exaggerated a little bit because it's smaller. Um, and then, of course, if you look on the back, it shows the same thing, but in Rex mode. So um, these are really helpful, though sometimes they're not all the information you need. When I did it with Metal Gear Rex, my big problem was Rex was shown in a PlayStation 1 game. So I couldn't really use anything but their recommendations, and they don't show everything. There's little corners and like armpit areas and crevices that you're not going to see. And that stinks, and you got to make it up. But whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Um, aside from that, there's some other parts that I had to make in here that you guys are probably going to see in a bit. Um, ones that you're not going to see. I'm going to pull this out first is like this sword. I'm going to show you how this thing works uh, first because it actually involves uh, this particular mode that he's in at the moment. I think everything else down there I'm going to need for um, Rex mode. Actually, no, other than this. Um, oh, goodness. These are so hard to use. Oh, man. Probably the most delicate parts. He has alternate hands. And um, it even fell off in here. They both broke as I just tried to pick them up. I'm going to try and reassemble this thing because it's impossible. Like, ah, no. Probably um, what might be the worst part of him, until he's painted. As soon as the paint goes on, uh, this these things are a lot more snug. Um, his alternate hands. As you've seen on Sahelanthropus, as I picked on him in uh, the series, he has two thumbs. And, uh, well, on each hand. And uh, if we can actually get a good look at these things, I don't know if it's going to want to show us or not. But, um, basically, this is him holding there we go um with both of his uh thumbs in um what would come out of him to hold as the sword the problem with this thing is both of the thumbs come right off um just just pops right off i don't really want to do it on purpose because it happens so much and it drives me crazy and each of those fingers also comes off this really didn't need to be so many pieces but it is. Like, if I dropped it right now, it would shatter into six pieces, I swear. And it's just so annoying to put it back together. Um, and until these pieces are, like, glued or anything like that, there is absolutely no chance he will hold that sword with this thing. No chance until it's either painted or glued. I guarantee you. So, I'm not going to show you that. Um, but instead, I'm going to show you how it's supposed to work. So, basically... Uh, if I pull these over here, hey, I got a nice little pointer handy. Um, so, he basically, if you remember from the uh, game, he pulls at one of these two, I don't know, lightsaber-looking things kind of stuck in his chest, which obviously you would use this hand ideally for, replacing it with this one. Um, I'm going to put it back in here just for now so I don't ruin it any more than I have already done. Um, so he would pull one of these out, which they're very easy to remove, unfortunately, like most parts on him. Comes right out, just kind of like three little prongs that stick in there. And um, that guy just kind of slides right into this. There you go. Right? You got a big old honking lightsaber. And you just kind of slide it into his hand. And there you go. He's got his sword. Um, but as I said, ain't no way he's holding this thing until the hand cooperates. Because the hand's got too many parts. Uh, upside though, these hands are all one piece. So they're better. Um, for now, I mean, obviously, maybe when come time comes time to uh, show him when he's painted, I will show him off actually holding the sword and everything. I'm probably gonna put some paint on the sword too, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, even though it's got a little bit of transparent plastic going on, I mean, it looks kind of nice, but you know, I just kind of think we could uh, get a little bit more uh, action going on down there. Now, uh, there's a few other pieces i'm just gonna call it that pieces that are down in there uh for turning them into rex mode like an alternate waist another plate that goes right here um uh, an extension in the neck uh, you know like a bunch of little things for he doesn't really transform like a toy you would expect him to like from i don't know mcdonald's or something like that um so what happens is uh, instead of him working like a transformer he you basically actually need to disassemble him in some parts and uh basically put him back together in the shape of the Rex so it doesn't really work like that so uh, for all those of you who were hoping he it was a quick transition no unfortunately it's not it's gonna take a little bit of work in order to switch him over but no big deal it, it they don't seem nearly as bad as what Ray had uh, Ray's was atrocious where you basically had to decide do you want the face open or shut permanently and that's all you get and uh, that stinks so that's why unfortunately I uh, like my Ray it's shut. I just chose shut because we're used to him seeing him shut. 
uh, not really using that water cutter, so unfortunately my Ray's perpetually got his mouth shut, but uh, this guy, I don't think we're going to be stuck. I mean, we're going to try and turn him into the other um, mode later in this video when we get more details going down on this guy, which I'm going to move the camera in uh, a little bit more now that we've seen him uh, from farther away. We'll start getting some more detailed shots as I show you. Um, these little characters up here, which you're probably most interested in how this guy is going down up here. So this is our itty bitty little Psycho Mantis. Um, so first off, let's see if I can even get this guy to appear for us. Um, this is our itty bitty little Psycho Mantis guy. Uh, he looks pretty bright. Obviously they're unpainted. They're going to come in this color. It's just so that it helps you with the skin tone first because it's usually the hardest color for people to mix. Or at least that's what I tell myself, but it's, it's really not. And usually I paint over it anyway. Um, he comes with this little clear plastic piece. He, it would really pop right off of there. So if I wanted, I don't really want to. I mean, when I paint him, I will. But um, for now, it's basically like a little wrench shape. And it just kind of clicks onto his base. And uh, how he attaches to Silanthropus is you see this little shape going right here. Basically a little flat um, piece. That really just wedges. You can actually see them better on this side right there. Uh, you see that grate going down right there? Uh, same thing as on the other side, and you basically just wedge it right in, and there you go. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm going to be slowly taking things away, so we, when we mess with Sahelanthropus, less things are going to be falling off of him, because things are going to be falling off of him. Um, just to give you a warning, he's super detailed, and that's probably his biggest problem, that uh, little pieces just keep on falling off of him, and it drives me nuts. Um, here is a itty-bitty little pilot liquid who is going to be uh, riding this thing in um, your Mission 51, the uh, mission that basically never happened, which is so ironic that they're giving us him for uh, what in the game was one cutscene of uh, Liquid actually piloting. the Well, not even piloting, really just sitting in the seat and not even ri driving this thing, but whatever. Um, he can do it, and you have one. I'm probably never going to do that because I think it's cooler if he's not actually in it. Uh, we got another s guy right here. This is Skullface. Um, he's super tiny, and the focus doesn't want to be friends with him. But um, that's him right there. I mean, it's it's occasionally working. There we go. Uh, he's super tiny. It took me forever to find out if he was just pointing his finger or holding a little gun out. Um, he's pointing his finger. Uh, whatever. I don't know. I, I really don't like Skullface, so there's that. He appeared... Hippie guy. I'd have been happier with, uh, I don't know, name on anybody else. But granted, he would be with this because you need like some sort of villain character. And of course, we have Big Boss, who would uh, be really cool if we could see him. I mean, obviously, these are the unpainted versions, and it's not going to be doing them any justice until they're actually painted. Um, they are very detailed. Just kind of trust me on that. Unfortunately, my camera uh, doesn't want to get that close. Um, it's on autofocus at the moment because my hands are going to be full. Um, so I'm just going to have to hope that it's going to do a good job for us today. Um, so here we go. I might actually, to make this easier, uh, grab the camera and kind of free move around Sahelanthropus. Just because this is going to be difficult to show you everything. So, um, man. This... Is really gonna be tough. It's probably the hardest figure review video I've ever had to do. Um, so, me, reason being, this guy's just so freaking detailed. And every little piece, as I mentioned, will want to come off. There's his uh, flamethrower dick laser, which, by the way, actually, um, fair warning to you guys, I broke a piece in here. The first piece I've ever broken in a model ever, and it wants to see my background instead. Um, all right, so first piece I ever broke ever. It was somewhere in here. Um, there was like that thing. Um, see that little white flap on this side? It's on my side, actually. Uh, but since focus is kind of working, I'm not really wanting to mess with it. So that little thing, I needed to move like which side the gun was shooting. I had it backwards on accident. Had to uh, try and disassemble a thing, and it broke while doing that. I did model glue it back together, and all is well, so... Fair warning, the pieces in this guy are super tiny, super detailed, and they're going to want to pop off, and that stinks. You know, the focus like is correct for like a second, and then it stays wrong. I don't understand what it thinks it's doing, so we're going manual. Screw it, I'm just going to leave it at this. This is about the distance I'm going to want to be at. Actually, you know what? Um, What if I even came in closer? 
That looks good. How about I stay at uh, this distance here? And I'm um, just going to keep it locked as normal. All right, so um, you can basically see right here. Oh, my gosh, these parts drive me insane. Um, these will fly off so many times. Watch. See that? Just boop, boop. Just, they just fall right off. And the reason is um, they don't have nearly as helpful of a joint that Rex's had, actually, which is weird. You'd think they would have learned their lesson um, that uh, Rex's was better. Maybe they tried to make a new... Um, version of this or something like that i'm not sure but this was not the right way to go so if you can kind of see what i'm doing here to put it back on it really just clicks well i wouldn't even say that it clicks it just kind of holds it on just by gravity but the problem is um if you move this guy around at all you know and you you want these to be touching the ground because that's the point of them um they're just gonna pop right off i mean he's too heavy for these itty bitty little things, they wouldn't help him. They just shoot off. Um, so, which makes me, of course, think like, really, in actuality, if this guy was stomping around in the desert, those things are just gonna shoot off. Just, boo, they're gone. So, that really sucks. But, um, I mean, I spent a long time shaving all of my parts down. So, hopefully, uh, when it comes time to paint, he's gonna look really good. I'm gonna try turning him around here so we can uh, start looking in the back as well. Um, because this is another thing I really want to talk to you guys about. I mean, as the stands for, uh, fortunately he's got a stand based like, uh, Rex did, uh, because Rex's stand was really sturdy and Ray's honestly kind of sucks, um, because Ray trips and falls all the time. Sahelanthropus is, is pretty awful. So there's this little piece, itty bitty little piece. I could show you, honestly, it's in here. Um, here we go. Just to show you how tiny this is. This little guy, you see this? This piece is basically wedged in his butt. And um, you find out when you're done building him through the model, you gotta pull this little piece out. You gotta find it first. And then pull this little piece out of him and then basically never use it again. So maybe I put it back in in Rex mode or something. I'm not sure. Honestly, at this point, maybe Rex mode's its own video because this is just gonna take way too long to talk about everything. And I'm sorry about that, but uh, I really wanna like give you guys a full fair analysis of this thing and I haven't even started moving him yet showing articulation so anyway the biggest problem with this as I was trying to get into that wasn't just trying to find it it's this um it's the fact that it doesn't oh gosh here we go I'm trying to move him it doesn't lock in um let's do it like this so that you can actually there we go see this as I do this it doesn't lock inside oh he actually just see that sits on it um, it's just a hole and it's honestly not even the right sized hole. I don't know if I did it wrong. I checked the, um, to, or the, uh, the manual multiple times on this and I did it correctly. And that is the right hole I was supposed to reveal. But the thing is when he sits on it, Ooh, I mean, it holds him up, but the thing is Rex, you got to push that thing in there and it, ah, it creaks, it forces against you and it's very strong and very sturdy. It's so strong, like I even showed in the video, um, Rex could be posed midair and jumping or doing something like that. Ain't happening with this guy. No, no way. Like Maybe if you coated a lot of paint in there or something, uh, to, or maybe some glue, if you, if you riskily wanted to glue him to it, which would also, you know, have its own set of problems, then you could try doing stuff like that. But other than that, no, he's just going to be standing, which kind of sucks. But um, anyway, moving around from there. I'm going to start uh, moving up. Um, actually, just kind of looking at things on his back area. You can see uh, he's got this pretty cool um, spear-looking thing that uh, actually does move. Um, the thing is, once you... Basically, if you push this in, uh, the spear extends. Um, but the problem is, then it's kind of hard to get this back out again because you, it's not as simple as just pushing it back in because there's... it. It's kind of complicated. It's all based on how it was... Uh, constructed which i mean i know how it worked but now that the parts are kind of concealed with this big gray thing it's kind of harder to see but basically you'd have to get like an exacto knife and try and wedge that back out so i did it once and i'm not doing it again um still moving around from here since we're on the arm uh yeah you saw those uh real crummy hands that we had before i think these thumbs do these thumbs come off oh thank god no okay um i'm just so used to just touching the other hands and they just fall apart um, I was actually really surprised and honestly disappointed when I first saw 
the uh, model pieces and these hands were one piece. Now I'm thankful and it is a godsend. Thank you so much, Sahalanthropist, that you have uh, single piece hands there. That's that's so helpful. So uh, obviously, anyway, he can like flip this over and like hold up skull face, which would be pretty cool to do uh, when the guy's painted. And um, I'm probably gonna put like little uh, clear plastic, very tiny bases, like maybe the size of my pinky nail, under those guys' feet and kind of glue them to them so they can stand a little easier because they don't have any bases to stand on, which sucks. Um, I'm not going to quite get into articulation just yet. We're just going to look at the parts. Um, we're going to move on from there. So other than that, I mean, he's super, super detailed um, with all the other stuff going down in here. Since we were talking about the arm and the junk that is on the arm accessory-wise, let's take a look at the shield. This thing falls off all the time. This may fall off more than, um, or I'm, I'm saying, like, in contenders for what falls off the most, number one, it's those little toes. Those toes, screw them. But uh, the shield, this thing falls off all the time. And the problem is, um, this thing is just not very strong. I bet when it's painted, it'll lock in way stronger. That's just what the paint does because it just makes it a tighter fit. It's more snug. Um, but basically, here, I'll just do it. There it goes. See, that was it. It's, I just grabbed it, and it's off. So you can see right there, the only thing holding that on was that one itty bitty little point that thing that was holding this up okay like no that was a that's just a stupid idea i don't know why they thought to do that uh but anyway here's the other side of it uh right here a lot of stuff going on it you I mean you would expect it to be able to be a lot more sturdy like they built it and even the model it looked a lot more sturdy than it really was i don't know what they were thinking again but uh hey at the very least um I think the paint will solve that. So putting paint inside joints, I don't know if you guys ever do that when you make models or if this is one that you're uh, thinking of doing for your first one because you just loved Metal Gear or something like that. Um, this is a very difficult model to build. Um, obviously, I, I'm, I'd say I'm experienced at building models now and this was a tough one. Uh, mainly because I ended up breaking a couple pieces and putting stuff together very slightly differently from what the model asked for and i didn't notice the problem until much later kind of stinks um but yeah just be very careful and just take your time with it i'm sorry if my hand's kind of shaky this camera's picking up every little jitter i do um cause it's also on a weird stand i'm holding so um back here this i don't know radome looking thing it's on a joint right here so noted uh, I think it's for moving it around for when it turns into Rex mode, but as for now, it's just supposed to be up there like that. Oh my goodness. Probably contender for number three thing that falls out the most. Um, though granted, this was one of the things I found out I assembled wrong. Uh, the railgun. Um, this thing is freaking huge. Maybe the thing you noticed first. Um, I'm just going to back up. Obviously, our focus is off, but that's so long. It's like That's seriously a foot long. It's so big. Just as railgun. And um, it's held in by one joint right there, which I got to tell you, um, first off, I accidentally had the joints rearranged, but forget, or, forget about that. You actually build these joints, right? And um, if that joint, because all the weight of this thing is going down to that little joint, if that joint is assembled um, so that the seam through it is horizontal, it will just fall down because it's too heavy. Does that make sense? So as you can see, uh, basically mine is vertical where the seam is vertical and the weight can't pull it down. So if I were to take that and like rotate it this direction as if he was like aiming it straight, right? You, you get what I'm saying? Um, it would just fall down. You'd have to move the joint each time too because it's too much weight on the joint. Huh, man. Um, I built him and I was like, does something go here? Nothing does, but it just looks like something goes there. I don't know. It just kind of bothered me. Same for the shield. Like, you would think that something attaches there. It's just weird having one big piece. But anyway, um, very detailed railgun. And I do need to mention something about the railgun. Um, I have it in its Rex mode right now because it just looks cooler, um, which basically means it can open up. Uh, we're not quite at the point where it does open up just yet. What the heck is that? A little piece of something stuck to him from, I guess, when I was uh, putting them together. Um, but up here, these two pieces, there's basically um, another little plastic piece that goes underneath a dark plastic that 
kind of has those little things come out and then you pull these out as far as they can go because they can retract if you want um so this thing would be smaller like if size is a problem for you guys um sure like you only have so much shelf space and you want them to be smaller uh sure i mean he wasn't meant to stand with this thing open i just think it looks wicked cool and uh i think you know bigger the better it's amazing so i have him showing off his uh big honking um you know what i mean rail gun at every opportunity he can so at this point i'm going to uh try and switch our focus back and show you guys some articulation actually you know maybe it's best that I actually bring him just closer instead and try and show you the articulation up close because then i'll be able to get some um detail what's going on because we also did not look at the head at all um so the head oh dear i don't want to mess with this. this is another piece that frequently falls out like you would never expect this but the head um it's in the neck joint which is to be fair is okay because you need to pop it out in order to make the rex mode anyway but it's gonna pop right out and um so oh gosh and he's leaning back he's gonna go oh man please don't please don't i really wish that he was more stable but instead here we go i'm gonna do the dangerous thing and just i'm gonna freehand this he's just standing free ever free he's way too detailed and he's just gonna like fall and shatter into a million pieces and i already know it that shield is just gonna go you know what just let's just know just preemptively and the toes just nope i'm just gonna nope them right off right now before I lose them, they will, because they're too small. I'm going to lose those things. Um, all right, so let's carry on with uh, where we were. Also, uh, little pieces that I'm going to be touching, and they might fall off just to give you a fair warning, just so that I showed them on before they come off and I say, oh, well, they fell off. See that little uh, dark piece right there? And there's another one right there. See those guys? They're going to fall off. They are actually not attached to the upper part. They're only stuck in the bottom i don't know why but they fall out so much um but still man just holding them is so cool though having them all together other than his toes and his shield i can't wait like i said until he's painted and uh i don't have any problems with um him falling apart so i'm gonna try this again i'm gonna hold him up with one hand and then try and articulate stuff with the other um so he's obviously got a point of articulation right here um he can completely move around it's all based on here we go i just knew it was gonna happen so i figured whatever i'm just gonna show you what is in there uh it's very detailed it looks pretty cool in there actually um but the thing is down in there um is one of those pc joints um and or uh, pc plastic pieces and it's supposed to make uh the part here fit in very nicely it's not very snug um so i'm gonna be coating that with some paint hoping it's a little more snug when i do uh put them together but Anyway, uh, there's that. It's basically all you're looking at in there. I'm just going to have him... Oh, gosh. What do I do? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> while I can't do anything with him back there, because um, he can't lay down, you can basically see this joint uh, can go side to side. Mm, I can do this. I can do this. There we go. There we go. You can kind of see we can go side to side. So that's what was giving us that extra angle there. Uh, and he can also based on the joints that are in and under the head look at all of that nonsense under there by the way um this thing can twist and go up and down actually just kidding not twist uh the twisting was caused somewhere else but uh anyway a lot of uh helpful joints right there in the neck when you put them into rex mode um because you're not going to see i'm not going to do any transformation thing Unless I do like a, a time lapse doing it uh, for the next video, because this is just going to take too long, and I'm I'm sorry about that preemptively, but I don't want to make uh, um, I don't want to make one enormous one and discourage you guys. So um, I'm gonna show very quickly how that attaches in there. I thought maybe I should just keep it in um, all the time, but the problem was when I did, his neck is like this tall. It it, it looks silly, so I was like, no, I, I gotta do it correctly. Um, so, I'm, am I just slowly going to dismantle him? No, I'm not going to do this. I was thinking i got to put it back in. The thing is, putting it back in is really tough. Ooh, 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 got a lucky crunch. Yes, perfect. Um, obviously. Also, the mouth does open up, though, um, I'm trying to get it as wide as we could possibly get it. 
that's about as far as it'll ever go. Um, I could raise his neck some more. There we go. Um, and uh, there you can see the cockpit. Very detailed in there. It's where um, little liquid's supposed to sit. Though, honestly, when I do this uh, paint job, I'm probably not going to put anyone in there because I find that a little creepier when, you know, just a uh, little baby psychomanus is in control of that thing. You know, a man on fire would have been a really cool character to get with this too. Just saying. Anyway, it just kind of occurred to me, like, oh, that'd be that'd be pretty sweet. So his jaw um, works kind of like Rex's, but not really. Um, Rex's was a little funny for getting it to stick back together. You also, you can see there's some clear plastic pieces. Those are actually uh, nice clear plastic ones here that they uh, <laughs> tricked you into thinking that they were uh, lighting up parts on him. They are not on the box. Uh, aside from that, he's got uh, posable points on his um, shoulder pads. Itty bitty little ball joint in there, um, but you know helps out. It's cool. Um, very nice double joints in here in the shoulder. There's a joint inside here, uh, and there's also a joint as you can see right here. Very articulated. Very nice. Um, I'm so glad I decided to take that shield off because I can mess with this arm now. Um, obviously, the, this is just an ordinary elbow joint. Nothing really special about that. All the posabilities up in here. What you can do with the shoulders, and from there. Oh, well, that's, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but the problem is that was actually one of the rubber joints and it really should not be doing this. Um, so I'm going to have to paint in here too to make that a little more uh, thick. But uh, anyway, so we've already looked at the hands, but the hands can basically go in uh, any direction you want, any uh, absurd, impossible direction. Granted, um, he can move them at about that distance in, which if I was... Actually, there you go. So anything you could expect him to uh, humanly do, if that this humanoid robot shape, you know, you would expect bones to be able to pull off, he can do, except um, take that a little bit farther just to make sure that it works. Um, let's see if I can reassemble, because fixing these problems is so tough, because, oh, he's so, um, I think I got it, I'm not sure. He's so detailed that there's not a really safe point to, like, brace on the other side of him and push against um, to get things like this to happen, which maybe uh, my joints, like, aren't pushed in all the way, and I just can't get them to that point because I'm scared I'm going to break him. So, <laughs> that's pleasant. Um, the other arm's basically the same. We already showed uh, how this guy works, so that's cool. Let's move on to the back thing that is uh, falling all over my fingers. Whoa. Um, back thing. I don't really know what it is, but it's got these uh, tank tube things. I don't know. I figured they were for like fuel, energy, something like that. They move around. They're basically just stuck in a little uh, peg joint. Not even a joint. It's just a little slot. Um, and they kind of move around. They're supposed to hang down like that. So um, I thought they were similar to the things in the front of him, but I guess they're just energy, extra fuel that just hangs off of him. Um, as I mentioned, uh, well, actually, this whole thing does move a bit but for the most part it should sit stationary and it's because of those things underneath him that i pointed out that actually have not fallen yet so huh there's that um but it's not like rex's where he you can move it around um maybe eventually when i turn him into rex mode i'll find out yeah i can but as of now i've not put him in rex mode yet so this is just the review on how sahalanthropus works um so i mentioned the gargantuan railgun that I can't even fit on camera in focus completely uh, works if you basically take out a couple parts on the inside of it which requires you to take these off first and then put them back on after sliding the whole thing down yeah you could uh, do that to shorten it which I don't see why you would want to because it's just so cool but I mean when he walks around he doesn't have it open like this but uh, I don't know it makes him more imposing and cool so, uh, moving on from there to the waist, it's kind of hard to see in there, but um, very detailed. There's a lot of parts. Um, basically, I was, whoa, building this model while Matt was building a uh, Gundam model he bought. And we were watching Alien uh, Covenant, by the way. Just sh random thing. Um, and uh, so, I built, uh, as he built his Gundam, which was a 144, to be fair, as he built his whole Gundam... Um, I built the torso of Sahelanthropus. It's that detail. It's, well, I mean, uh, it's not like, uh, like I said, it's not like the Gundam was much different, 
but I'm saying that's how much work goes into just the torso of this guy. There's a lot going on in there. There's a lot you don't see, and I'm glad I don't have to paint all of it because it's insane how much is in there. Um, on his back waist, he's got these two, I don't know, butt flaps, and um, they do move, I think. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Some itty-bitty little piece. Oh, this dumb thing. Good. We have to... We get a conversation about these dumb things. I'm going to save that for later. I'll show you. Um, but anyway, these butt flaps do come up and go back down. I don't really know why. Maybe for Rex mode if you need to. I don't think this does in the middle. No, this thing doesn't. So there's that. Uh, oh, dear. He wants to lean back, which of course you would expect him to because he's got like... Like, you complain when you go back to school and your backpack's heavy. Look at what this dude is just chucking around with. So, yeah, be... Uh, be a little more considerate. All right, so um, I'm going to just quickly bypass the dick laser so we can get to the thing that fell off of him. Um, probably the most absurd thing that they ever expected you to do with this model is right here. So um, that is supposed to show a little flap thing where his, like, I guess missiles can shoot out of the legs. Um, he has way less missiles than Rex did. Rex has way more missiles, but... Uh, as you can see, like, this guy was more of a physical brawler. So, anyway, on top of that, um, the piece right here, as you can see from the back of it, that's all it has, okay, nothing special, to lock into this thing flat like that one is. But, in the manual, they actually expect you to show him with it not only like that, but somehow open, like can't even do it but like this I it I can't even get them to do that um I don't know what on earth they were smoking but uh maybe if I really forced it it might happen but I'm sorry that ain't happening uh, like it's hard enough just trying to get it back on where it was I could probably get it where it's at least not falling off again like that like I didn't even you didn't even hear any noise of any clicking there which is a shame that's the side of his leg that was kind of coming apart. Um, so, whatever, I guess now that we're looking at the rest of the leg, uh, there's these other canister things that are on here. I don't know if they're supposed to be like giant grenades or something, because that's what they look like. Um, and uh, the dark part, this worries me. These things are actually not attached to him at all. Um, the little white thing is stuck uh, right at that point where it looks like it touches Sahelanthropus. There's a little peg that sticks into him on his leg. And the black grenade piece just kind of clicks inside. It just kind of fits in there. And it's not very snug. It's just snug enough so that it's not falling. So I'm hoping paint fixes that once again and it's going to be a lot tighter and that's not going to be a big deal. But um, anyway, all the detail for the, the legs are on the back. Um, I don't want to rotate him around because we're already looking at the front of his giant imposing uh, metal manhood staring you in the face right now. And as I mentioned, this piece drove me bonkers. Um, you can kind of see right there, it does go up. There was a little segment that showed it um, for, you know, sticking back into like the pelvis area and it can aim down. Wow, it can go really far down. Wow. Um, oh yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure when he goes into Rex mode, this thing like just completely faces the other direction. So um, that's what that's about. Um, so I'm gonna put it back up. I'm assuming it locks in here and it's supposed to stay up all the way like so and um, this is supposed to rotate I think um, maybe it does see is this is the part that I had to glue and I, I really don't want to mess with that part and it's gonna face straight so um, I'm sorry if that does rotate and I'm not showing you the full spectrum of it but I just be very wary there's so many itty bitty parts and they're all hinged on the next one holding up the whole thing that it's just, it, I, I don't want to mess with it. Um, but in here, this does move. So um, this you can still move around for whatever reason. Um, dick lasers, you know. Except he has a flamethrower, a dick flamethrower. Rex uh, gets the dick laser. This guy gets uh, the dick flamethrower. Ah, all right, come on, we can we can turn around. Whew, man, it is so hard to manhandle this guy. All right, so back of the legs. Like, look at all the nonsense going on back in there. Like, once you put the big plates on, you're like, oh, man, all my work just got covered up. That's what it feels like putting 
one of these Metal Gears together. They've done a great job. You know, that um, seam right there reminds me, there's a lot of pieces in this guy in particular that just didn't want to go together all the way, and it drove me crazy. Um, mostly, the biggest problem was actually in the railgun. Um, I think I finally fixed it, but to be completely honest, like uh, there was some part on him that I honestly bit because um, I needed so much force, and um, I don't remember where that was. I think it's honestly somewhere on the leg, um, but... There is a point where you can see on him that I had to bite it in order to get it to shut all the way. And it left visible damage, unfortunately. Like, I try and bite gently. If I have to bite something in order to crush it together, Kim always gets mad if I do something like that anyway. But you know what I'm saying. Like, sometimes I just absolutely, like, I didn't have a choice. Um, so looking at the legs and the joint region in here, it's um, actually being obscured. We got to see it from the front. Um, of course we do. Oh dear, that railgun is so big. Why does it have to be like dangling off of um, three different uh, joints, all each wanting their chance to just fall off? There we go. We see it in there. Um, not nearly as posable as the elbows, though it doesn't really need to be. It's the hip. And as I explained about how his stand goes into his butt. He can only stand up unless uh, you find some way to fix that, which I'm going to do my best to. We'll see in my part three Sahelanthropus uh, model video, but as of now, um, that's basically all the detail you're going to get out of that, out of the uh, hip. Um, it's just a straight shot down to his knee, which is going to operate just like the um, elbow, though this little flap just is there to do things. I don't know. Um, stop it from going forward because you know he does kind of stand like this he doesn't stand um you know more straight up he actually kicks the leg forward a little bit more because his weight is so much in the back of him that he has to stand like that um that's just how they designed him so that makes sense uh aside from that down here at the bottom aside from these little guys these little pincers which are supposed to have the toes remember let's not forget about these little piece of crap these guys are supposed to there it goes! We finally lost our railgun. And actually, since it uh, busted open, I'm going to show you um, what I was talking about, about that extension piece that goes on the inside, but not now. I just kind of knew it was going to happen. Um, so here we go. This thing is supposed to go up and down in order to make sure that those things are always like touching the ground. And uh, this is a very nice set of joints that can go side to side, up and down, forward and back, basically any rotated direction. They're very nice, it holds very well, um, and uh, it basically just needs to mirror where, you know, he's standing, because it's supposed to be in any terrain kind of thing, which is very helpful for something like this if you uh, were able to get that back um, in his, uh, the stand, holding him up a little bit more properly. Um, to take a look at this, I'm going to need to uh, get him back on the stand at the moment, which uh, is kind of unfortunate, so... How about for now, I'm going to throw our autofocus back on just so I can't. you can actually see me doing this back here as I'm struggling to basically put him back together in the way we saw him in the beginning of this video. Um, so that wasn't really bad. I just kind of found where the hole was, slid it right in, and he sat on him. And honestly, I got kind of lucky there. But he, uh, where's that hole? Where the heck is it? Eh. eh gosh, it's so hard to find that. Um. He uh, is very stubborn sometimes and just does not want to go back up. I'm going to put the uh, toes back on as well. I know you really can't see them right now unless I... Boop, there you go. Now you're now you're in on the game going on. Um, I really wish he was painted. Like I said, and it's, it's not because of um, just him looking better, as I mentioned before. I just want him to be painted so he's more stable and he can do cooler stuff. Because as of now, if I try and move him around, he just kind of shatters, and that's a, just depressing after all the work that goes in him. You just see the thing like, you know, the, the railgun just falls off, and that's it. Um, so he's got everything he needs back there other than his railgun, so I'm just going to put him back there. So this is how the thing fell. Um, basically, that little piece, like I said, that joint that is supposed to just stick inside of his shoulder, decided... Screw you, Alex, I'm not going to be doing that no more. And um, it just takes a little bit of force, just like that much, pushing it to the side, and boom, falls off. 
And oh no, it's like my least favorite part to put back together. Gosh, this is awful. Uh, but anyway, um, if we look at this over here, what I was talking about to extend these pieces and make it Rex mode versus uh, uh, Sahalanthropus' shut mode, uh, there is a dark piece that goes inside of here. Uh, same for the top one, right? Right. This one is goes here. No, 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 no. Goes here. Okay. Actually, it goes here. I was just kidding. Um, but uh, anyway, there is a little dark piece that goes in there. If you take it out, um, the whole thing shuts and kind of collapses in on itself, and you can push these down. And um, I thought, you know, whatever. It. I think it looks cooler with it out. So um, there you go. I'm gonna click this thing back together, and um, oh. Did I put it on backwards? I put it on backwards. Um, I'm going to put this thing back to... No. No, I didn't. Nah. I was going to say, uh, there's no way I did, because that's the only way that it goes on. Um, all right, so that's back on and all is well, except the problem remains that this reassembly is uh, kind of a nightmare. And, um, man, this is not a fun, fun one to fix. Um, so... Um, I might just leave it in a couple pieces because it's going to take me a long time to honestly fix that. So, um, at the very least, that is Sahalanthropus finally together, finally standing up on his own, and finally not in a box in a bunch of pieces. Now, he is in three pieces. So, uh, just, you know, very slowly falling apart. Um, so, as I promised, I am going to show you guys Rex mode because it's going to take me so long to, for one, change him into Rex mode. Um, as well as discuss everything about Rex mode after I've basically transformed him um, Based on you know the doability of it all and you know all that I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot to say I'm gonna make another whole video about that so um, check the playlist of the figure reviews if you're interested in that and um, That's gonna be coming very very soon if you guys want to see what mine looks like when he's finished painted um, Then stick around. It's gonna take me a long time to do that. I, I, I spend my time painting these guys and making sure that they look really nice when I'm done. Like, uh, if you want to check out my other ones, I did, as I said, Rex and Ray. They're both in the playlist for figure reviews, which this video is in right now. So, with that all the way, um, just really quick, I guess, um, at this moment, talking about the Sahelanthropus, um, I'm still really happy about it. I still really like it. Don't get me wrong, I don't feel like I've just been complaining this entire video. Um, he's still really cool. He's huge. And I really, I really like the fact that he like towers over everything else. And I don't know. Um, I always thought he was just like a, a really cool um, version in like Metal Gear history of like how this thing eventually kind of evolved and was uh, built again from memory, sort of, by Otacon to make the other Metal Gear. I don't know. It's it's really cool. I, I don't know. And, and the story and the, the concept of how he would work so much better like a human. Uh, if it would be able to stand up and be able to hold more and do more. Um, I don't know if that really works when translated to robots, but whatever, that was Metal Gear's perspective. Um, so I, I love the game. I love the model, and I'm really glad that I finally have the third and final model. Really excited about that. So with that out of the way, I say we start messing around with this guy and try and turn him into <laughs> his Rex mode. Yikes, I have no idea what kind of undertaking I'm talking about. This could be super easy, could be not. So either way, to find out, I will see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.